All right, so today we are going to be creating a military style crate for your video game so that people can break it open and take stuff. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a cube and kind of make it look like it's the same shape and size relatively as that crate, something like that. I don't know. Scale it up. You probably want this to be pretty big, in fact. Probably something like this. We'll talk more about units and measurements later. First things first, we're going to set the pivot point in the correct location. So we're going to turn on our snaps to point, which means if you were to take a vertex, it's going to snap to the closest vertex, which is kind of cool sometimes. But what we're going to do is we are going to adjust in object mode. We're going to adjust our pivot by holding down D, which is this thing. We're going to adjust it to this bottom corner. Then we're going to set our snaps to the grid. And if we take this now, and we put it right in the middle, that means that our pivot is right there. This little cross right here is where the object is going to pivot around in Unreal. And... Uh, if you forget about that, you neglect it, it does make life a little more challenging. But now this means when you scale it, it's going to scale it from that point, which makes it really easy to work with in Unreal. <coughs> Alright, let's get started with our design. So I got this picture right here, which I'll put on Classroom so you can see it. Um, the basic structure is pretty simple. There's these wires. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to worry about those. But really, it's this part right here that we want to focus on. So we'll take this face and we're gonna do a little bit of symmetry so over here on the right hand side go to your modeling toolkit and we want if you look down here we want to have symmetry on the z-axis which is the blue one so I'll set this to object Z and what that means now is whatever I do to this side will happen on that side so I'm gonna do a control E extrusion I'm gonna hit R to go to scale the extrusion I'm gonna pull this in you can see that's that part right there. So let's zoom in a little bit and you might consider pushing it in a little bit that way so it's like perfectly even on all sides and then it looks like these boards that are kind of just cut across there so that's good. Okay now we have to get this part right here to come in so I'll just control E extrude that and I'm going to turn my snaps off go like there okay and then we're gonna have these two blocks of wood that are gonna show up there but let's let's hold off on that for just a second so the next thing that I'm gonna do if I hit three this is what my object looks like if I go to high poly mode but if I leave it like this it looks very kinda cartoonish low poly yuck so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to edge mode we're gonna shift right click and go to insert edge loop tool which I guess there's also a button up here for it. You could always push. Uh, I don't know. I just like to do it that way. So then I'm going to insert an edge loop here. And you'll notice, oops, let's set that to one edge loop. It'll happen to both sides. Oh, you know what? It's not going to let you with this symmetry on unless you do two. So I'm going to do two again. And then I'm going to take these two, go to edge mode, go to selection. Okay, I know why. I have to move this one. So double click to select this edge loop and just move it over and it'll automatically move the other one. It gets a little weird when you get symmetry on. Um, but that'll keep it perfectly symmetrical. Now when I hit three, you can see it's starting to get a little shape to it. Let's do the same thing. I'm going to insert edge loops here and here. I'll hit R to scale those up. You want them pretty close to the edge. That's going to give it a nice corner without being super round because this is a pretty hard object. So pretty close to the edge. Let's do the same thing. I'll go back to my edge loop tool on this side. We'll spread those guys out with R scale. And let's see what this is looking like. Ooh, not bad. Not bad at all. Um, you know what? This one's a little too far from the edge. Let me move that in. We want that to have a nice edge to it. Okay. So
So now we have to get into, let's go to single relative distance from the edge. You got to put one here. And here. And with symmetry on, it's still happening on both sides. You also got to come in and do it here and here. And that should, good object mode here, you can see, that's looking pretty good. Um, if you want to get fancy, you can take this edge right here. Let's see, that's all four of these. One, two, three, oops, four. I wonder if we could just push them in a little bit that way. See what that looks like. That's okay. Um, you could support that edge loop if you wanted to, but then we're getting pretty high poly. You don't have to do that if you guys if that's too confusing. But um, that's cool looking, I guess. I don't know. It looks a little funky. But let's not worry about that. So now I'm gonna uh, put some wooden beams right here and there, or blocks, I guess. So I'll take a cube, stick it right here, and get that thing scaled up. Now there is a way to get this thing perfectly. Don't drag it by the red and blue, just drag it by the yellow in the middle. That way it'll stay symmetrical. There is a way to get this to fit perfectly. Um, I'm not going to mess with that right now but just know that's a possibility. It has to do with your snaps. So basically just get it as close as you can into place. Something like that. Eh, mine's a lot thicker, that's okay. And then make a duplicate, control D, and put that one over here. And once again, these are low poly, so um, eh, we'll leave them low poly. It's pretty complicated to make those. Yeah, I'll show you real quick. If you select one, you put it in isolation mode. Go into edge loops. I'm going to turn off symmetry on this. It is. No, it's done. And just quickly create edge loops. Let's do two at a time. Here, scale them with R. Pull this up. Let's do go back to this. To here, scale them with R, pull them across. To here, scale them with R, pull them across. And that's pretty much it. Okay. So now I'll go out of isolation mode. And I'll duplicate this one. Delete this first. Go away. Object mode. Control D, W. And there we go. I guess that's looking good enough. Now the next thing we're going to talk about, in fact, I'm going to take these guys, put them on the other side because I forgot to do that. Control D, stick those over here. If I go into wireframe view, I can even go into my left view, make sure that those are exactly where they need to be. good. Cool. Maybe pull them out a little bit more. Okay, so the next thing we're going to talk a little bit about is uh, what's called edge, I mean, sorry, uh, UVs. So, UVs are complicated, but basically what we have going on here, I'm going to select all this. I'm going to make it one object. In object mode, select everything. Shift right click combine. So this is all going to be one object. Now I'm going to go to the UVs and take a look what they look like. This is the UV editor. And this is basically, if you were to apply a texture to it right now, this is what it would look like. Oh my goodness sakes. I must have done a double extrusion at some point. No, I don't know. That's weird. It just looks weird right there. I don't know why. Um, obviously it's not very pretty. If I were to like paint this, it would be like stretched in some areas, gross in others. 
So what we're going to do is we're just going to tell the computer, go ahead and just automatically try to figure this out. So let me select this object, go to UV Automatic. And there it goes. That looks really nice. Much better. And it sticks it in this little thing called the um, UV map. And this allows you, when you paint it, you paint in like Photoshop, you paint right on this thing. And then it puts it into the 3D environment. So it's like unfolding a box and laying out the pieces out and uh, just makes life easier for us. Last thing we want to do is finalize our uh, high poly mode. So we're going to click on this button. And this is our final product. Pretty boring, but not bad. Now let's go ahead and export it. And you see the nice UV map. Click on that checker to see. We're going to export this, send it to export selection. I'm going to send this to Unreal, Static Mesh, Create, John. Put your name on it because your partners are going to do this too. I'm going to put that in my, doc my desktop for now. And let's go into Unreal and import this. So go ahead and fast forward while I get this thing going. Okay, so now I'm going to go to my desktop, and you can just drag this right into here. It'll actually make a copy of it and put it in your own real folder. Um, import all. It says no smoothing groups. I could have gone in here and when I exported it, set the geometry to include smoothing groups. Smoothing groups are basically the mesh display are you going to go soft edges hard edges hard edges look like this which is probably what I want to do in this case soft edges would look like that not really a difference in this one soft and hard edges is what I usually do it kind of figures it out for me but in any case we're fine let's go into Unreal and drag this crate out giving it a Lambert one. Let's go ahead and just switch that to a wooden texture. Oops. Wood, wood, wood. How about pine? Ooh, look at that crate. Beautiful. Doesn't that look nice? And notice that the Gr uh, grain goes this direction. If you wanted to change that, you could actually go in here, select that UV shell. And you can see that these are all laid out that direction. If I were to just to rotate them 90 degrees, and then lay, you select all, see this is way beyond, you don't need to do this. Just know that you can do it. I'm gonna uh, lay this out. You'll kind of understand this later. When I lay it out, I have to tell it not to flip things around. So yeah, this gets pretty complicated, but just know that you can do it. Um, I don't want to rotate the shells, but it's doing it anyway. Oh well. Wait, did it? No, I fixed it. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Because it was like this. Yeah, okay. So whatever. It's fine. Uh, okay, so let's uh, put some physics on this because I always like shooting it. There's a way to make this destructible, and I haven't played around with that yet, but I do want to in just a bit. So let's play the game and blow that thing up. It's very big and heavy, so it's probably not going to move. But yeah, I can walk right through it. we got to fix the collision, but it looks nice. As you can see, it looks like a crate. How easy was that? Yeah, you guys are getting good at this. All right. Let's uh, be done for now.